Hello everybody, I'm Ben from Reister and Schnell here in Chilton. I'm a service technician in the lawn and garden department. Today in the Reister and Schnell cut clinic, we're going to be going through general operation, attachments, and maintenance of your compact tractor. All right, well, we're going to, first thing we're going to do is we're going to fire up this machine. And then uh, after we fire it up, we're going to show you what all the lights and bells and whistles and doodads and switches and levers are on this. So the first thing you want to do is you want to climb on up and hop on your seat. The next thing you want to do, safety first, because here at Reister and Schnell, we care about you. You want to put your seatbelt on. All right, everybody, once you're, once you're buckled into your machine, you can go ahead and you can adjust your steering wheel for your comfort. You can also adjust your seat also for your comfort. After you are safely on your machine and buckled in, you can go ahead and you can turn it on. Now your lights go through on your dash and that's just a check to make sure that all your lights work. The one you want to watch is your glow plug light. You want to let the glow plug cycle until it's ready until the light goes off and then you're ready to start your machine. All right, we're going to go through the operations of the controls on the right hand side of the dash. We're going to start at the bottom. We're going to work our way up. The first thing we got here down here is your parking brake. Now to apply your parking brake, you push your brake lever and you pull your park brake lock up. You hold it up and you release your, your brake lever. Your park brake is now set. To take the park brake off, you do the exact opposite. Push your brake, push your lock lever down, and you can release your brake. Your machine's now free to move. Another one we got right above the park brake is your cruise control. Cruise control operates as you push your hydrostat pedal you can lock in your hydrostat pedal by pulling up on your black knob. The cruise is now set. To take the cruise off, you can either push the push your hydrostat level, level lever a little bit, and it automatically unlocks, or you can push your brake. Either way, the cruise control lever will unlock. Up above that, we got your ignition switch. That's your ignition on. Turn it again to the right, that will start the machine. Above that, we got your throttle. When you're starting your machine, you want your throttle all the way back. You want to start it at an idle. When you're ready to mow or you're ready to go, you can push the throttle forward and that will speed the motor up and make your tractor work faster. Above that, or right alongside of that, is your PTO switch. So you push it once, the first click, and that sets it. You push it again, and that will turn on your PTO. All right, let's go through the right-hand side of the machine. So starting up front, on your floorboard, you have your hydrostat pedals. Your inside pedal is your forward pedal. Your outside pedal is your reverse pedal. The hydrostat works, the further you push it, the faster you go on either pedal. Right on the inside, squarely in the center of the machine, is your rated descent knob. Now that controls your three point. And we'll get, we'll get to the three point a little later on. But as you can see, clockwise is minus. Your three point, your mower deck, Everything that runs off that three-point hitch, the rate of descent minus, it'll drop slower. If you turn it towards the plus, it'll drop faster. Just to the outside of that is your four-wheel drive knob. When you want to use your four-wheel drive knob, all you got to do is shift it forward. You want to take it out of four-wheel drive, 
All you gotta do is shift it back. Now up on the side is your loader control. It's a typical loader control. Pull back, it'll raise your loader up. Push forward, it will lower your loader down. There's also a neat little feature called float. Push it forward all the way and it locks in. And that allows your loader to sit there and float with the terrain of the ground. Take it out of float, all you have to do is pull it back a little bit. When you take your loader off, there's a little lock. You keep your loader control in the neutral position and you push in on your lock. And that effectively locks your loader control. To take the lock off, all you have to do is pull it out. You are free to use your loader control. All right, this knob here is your three-point hitch knob. It also controls your mower deck. When you push it forward, your three-point hitch drops. When you pull it back, your three-point hitch raises along with your mower deck. All right, we just got done talking about the right side. Now we're gonna talk about the left side. We're gonna start up at the front, and we're gonna work our way to the back. First things first is your directionals. Just like an automotive, you hit your left button and your left directional blinks. You hit your right and your right directional blinks. The center position is your directionals off. Moving our way down, we got a light switch. All the way counterclockwise is off. One click clockwise and it turns your hazards on. The second click clockwise it turns your hazards on and it turns on your front machine lights the final click clockwise it turns your hazards off it leaves your front machine lights on and it turns on your side work lights again all the way counterclockwise is off continue working our way down the left hand side of the machine Here's your foot brake. Further on back from the foot brake, this little silver lever, that's your differential lock. If you get yourself in a hairy situation on your lawn, out in the woods, wherever you may be, you can always take your left foot, slide it back, place your heel on that, press it down, and it essentially locks your rear wheels together, creating positive traction to help you get out of your tough sticky situation. Up above that is your height of cut knob. That controls the height of your lawnmower deck and what, how high and how low that you may be clipping. Again, counterclockwise lowers it, clockwise raises it up. Back from there is your shift knob. Push it back and you have high range. Forward and you have low range. Center is neutral. Over there, just to the left of that, is your fuel gauge. That'll let you know how much fuel you have in your machine. A little further back, we have PTO. There's three different selections on your PTO lever. All the way back is your mid PTO, used primarily for running your lawnmower or your front snow blower. The center position runs both your mid PTO and your rear PTO. And of course, all the way forward is strictly rear PTO only. A Little bit farther back, there's your fuel. Everybody knows what goes in there, diesel. All right, we're gonna go through a couple of attachments. We're gonna go through lawnmower deck, loader, and a snow blower. Then we're the three primary pieces of equipment that are purchased with 1025s. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go through this loader. We're gonna take this loader off this tractor. First thing we wanna do is we wanna fire up our machine. After we get it running, we wanna put a little bit of down pressure on that bucket. And 
and that's enough to take the pressure off our locks. Once we got the pressure off our locks, we can reach down, we can unlock it. And after we got our two locks unlocked, we can pull back on the stick. And that'll effectively release your loader from the loader mounts. After you got your loader released from the mounts, you're going to want to shut your machine down. Set your parking brake. Neutralize your hydraulics. You can now step off the machine. And you can remove your hydraulic hoses from the loader. Hang them up out of the way. Make sure to install your dust plugs. You're going to want to do this to keep dust, dirt, and debris and all the bad stuff out of your hydraulic system. You can set them off to the side, step back on your machine, you can now fire it up and you're free of your loader. Alright, so now you're ready to use your loader again. Let's get this loader back on. You want to fire up your machine and one of the key points that you want to really watch when you're driving up to your loader is you want to make sure that you're as straight and as square to that loader as you can possibly be. You want to get as close as you can to that loader. After you get it up to the loader, you're going to want to set your parking brake, turn your machine off, and neutralize your hydraulics. You can grab your hydraulic hoses, and of course you want to take your dust covers off. One by one, you can connect your hoses. They're all color coded. Black on black, yellow on yellow, so on and so forth. After you get your hoses connected, you can hop back on your machine. Turn your machine back on. Take your parking brake off. And you can pull back slowly on your stick. One thing you do want to pay attention to is your saddles. You want to make sure on both sides that your bucket and your locks are following down and they get in their appropriate saddles. Keep raising up. After you get them in their position, you can lock your locks. Your 
bucket is now able to be used. All right, so you're ready to put your mowing deck back on. A couple of things that you want to make sure you got in place, your height of cut knob. You want that down in the install position. You want your hydraulics fully lowered. And again, you're going to want your machine four wheel drive. And after we fire it up and we crawl up over the deck, we're going to want to make sure we're in low range. I don't know if anybody heard that, but there was a click. One of the things you want to make sure is that your lock for your auto connect, that that's locked. Once you verify that that's locked, you want to make sure that your front hanger is in place. After you verified that, you're ready to mow. You can get back on your machine. Fire it up. Raise your deck up. Set your height of cut knob to what was previously set. And then you can go ahead and you can lock all four of your gauge wheels in. You're now ready to mow. All right, so we're going to discuss how to take your snowblower off. First thing you want to do, you want to make sure that your unit is in neutral. Second thing you want to do is you want to make sure your hydraulics are neutralized. After that, we're going to start unhooking. See, so find your two shoot knobs or your sh shoot hoses and you remove your shoot hoses. With that, you can remove the hoses from the holders. You can then take your hoses. Usually what I like to do wrap them around the chute. That way they're safely out of the way. After that, you can unlock your blower housing. After you get your blower housing unlocked, you can unhook your PTO. After you unlock your PTO, your blower housing, you can hop back on the tractor, you can lower your frame down, and you can back away from your blower. All right, after you get your blower off, if you want to fully remove your snow blower, one of the first things you want to do is again neutralize your hydraulics. Then you can go ahead and you can take your two lift cylinder hoses off. Pull them off. After that, there's two locks also. Just like the blower housing, you can pull them out and turn them and lock them out in the out position. 
after that you can lift your unit up move it forward and your lift cylinder or your lift your lift cylinder and your lift frame are now free of the tractor after that if you want to do so there's a PTO shaft underneath with that PTO shaft there's a bar you want to take that bar out move that bar down forward and down at the same time also at the tail end you have a mid PTO just like any of the PTOs on John Deere equipment it's a quick fitting or a quick coupler you're going to want to pull your collar out and that will release the PTO shaft from your mid PTO all right we're going to talk about maintenance maintenance on your compact tractor with the maintenance we were talking about your oils your greases your filters John Deere does have their own line of oils and fluids along with greases they also have a convenient filter pack for your compact tractor now this filter pack includes all common basic filters hydraulic filters oil filter fuel filters anything you might need as far as filters are concerned for your compact tractor they take the guesswork out of it so you never have to forget or wonder if you forgot a filter with that being said a couple of key points on your machine there's four grease circs underneath your machine there's an engine to hydrostat drive shaft that's right underneath this center tunnel they have a grease circ on the front and they have a grease circ on the rear also underneath your unit there's a four-wheel drive shaft that runs from the transmission up to your four-wheel drive that also has a grease circ on the rear and it also has a grease circ on the front you want to make sure that at the proper times give and take the load working hours of your machine how hard or how easy you're using machine that you grease that periodically all the information as far as greasing and lubricant changes you should be able to find in your operators manual and that should give you the hours and the time requirements for changing out your oils and greasing your unit with that being said we're going to go through some of the common locations of the filters on your machine you can raise your hood and your side panels are easily removable little quarter turn pins turn them counterclockwise a quarter of a turn and pull them out pull your side panel straight to the rear and it pops right off You can do that on both sides of your machine. That way, everything that you need to get to for maintenance is easily accessible. We're going to start out with oil. Right down here is your oil filter. That's for your engine oil. This is your dipstick. Makes checking your oil easier you have your primary fuel filter just behind the oil filter there's two two locations to fill your oil one is at the front of the motor on the side the other one is at the top on the valve cover while we're over here this is your air filter housing you can pull that clip out Turn that counterclockwise and pull that out and you have now gained easy access to your air filters. You're going to want to periodically check your primary air filter. You're going to want to make sure that that's not dirty, that that flows clean, 
one of the things that we like to do is we look down into the barrel and we see if we can see some light coming through. The less light that shows through, the dirtier your filter is. Up front we got your radiators, your radiator in your screen. One of the periodic things after you get done mowing, for example, you want to make sure that you pull this screen out. You're going to want to shake that off, blow that out, make sure that's clean. It's common to get grass clippings up in there. And what that does is that's going to stop dirt and debris, grass clippings, any other kind of larger particles from getting caught up in your radiator and overheating your machine, possibly leading to costly mechanical breakdowns. You also have your battery up front. Keep moving around. And right here is your radiator overflow tank. You're going to want to make sure that that's between the lines. There's a minimum and a maximum. You're going to want to keep that coolant in between them lines. Underneath this floorboard is a commonly missed filter. It's the first fuel filter from your tank in your fuel system. You're going to want to make sure that you change that for good measure at least once a year, depending upon use and hours put on the machine. Along with oils, there is a plethora of joints on your machine and on any attachments that you might get to it, the grease zerks. This is a backhoe. Your buckets are going to be similar. What you're looking for is little grease zerks. Again, in your owner's manual, you can find how often you should be greasing them. Hi, my name is Josh. I'm a salesman here at Reister & Chanel. Uh, thanks for watching our cut clinic. Uh, we went through the uh, maintenance and operations of all of our equipment. Now I'm just gonna take you through a few of our attachments you can add to these things. Um, like I said, a few out of hundreds of them. Um, here we have an iMatch quick hitch. Very simple to hook up to all your implements. Um, and don't forget, if you do get a loader, we do have some weights available also that you can purchase through us. Um, then going over here, we do have a drive over deck, very easy to use. Um, we also do have some load and go brackets that you can mount right on the decks. Um, these make it real simple. You take your bucket off your tractor, hook onto these things and you can pick your deck up and clean it out. Then going over here, we do have backhoes you can also put on these machines. Um, very handy. Um, quick attach loaders, very simple to take on and off as you've seen in our previous video. Then we do also offer the front snowblower, rear snowblower for any of these machines. And uh, you can also check out our link below for other things and we do have plenty other attachments you can look at.